One of the most important annual political meetings happened this week in Atlantic City. The League of Municipalities Convention and the newly elected governor, Phil Murphy, was there. So was Jersey Matters' Don Stensland Menti. Don. Thanks, Larry. Here at the League of Municipalities, New Jersey's most powerful politicians, business leaders, and lobbyists are among the thousands of people gathering here at this convention. And of course, they're also saying hello to a new era in New Jersey politics and goodbye to the Chris Christie era. It won't be easy, and it certainly won't be overnight. But let there be no doubt, New Jersey is poised to be the comeback story of this nation. The key to that comeback, as well as Governor-elect Phil Murphy's ability to fulfill his campaign promises, is most likely this man, powerful Senate President Steve Sweeney. Just because we're all Democrats doesn't mean we're all going to, you know, fall in line and do what the governor says. We're going to work with the governor. We're going to respect his office. But at the end of the day, we are the Senate. There's, there's an assembly, and we're co-equal branches, and you can't get anything done without all three working together. Senator Sweeney easily won re-election despite a brutal effort to boot him from office by the bosses of the state's largest teachers union. The race set new records with a $20 million price tag. Thankfully, the voters that I represent know me and have known me for a long time now, and obviously they didn't believe the stuff that the NJA was saying. And some of the stuff they were saying was so over the top. But this, this, this was a fight for the taxpayers. They wanted me out because I'm the one that did benefit reforms. I'm the one that made changes. And, you know, they, they just don't think, they just don't get it, that the taxpayers can't afford it anymore. You know, the, 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 the well is dry, and we got to help taxpayers. That means everyone has to join in the struggle. And obviously, they're very much against that. And I understand it as a labor person, but they're not realistic, and they're not being fair to the people that are paying their salaries. Governor-elect Murphy faces the challenge of keeping big campaign promises while leading New Jersey out of financial troubles, including a pension fund with a $50 billion deficit. He's pushing for legalizing marijuana as a source of new revenue. And one of those new ideas is legalizing marijuana to help with all of the budgetary issues and pay the, you know, pay down this $50 billion deficit with the pension. Is that something you could support legalizing? Well, you know, at this point, I haven't made my mind up on this. I have some, uh, some serious concerns about you know, the impact on uh, drivers, for example. Uh, I don't think this is something that we should do just because we're, we're in need of cash. Uh, this has social implications. The people in the law enforcement community are, are concerned about the, the signal that is sent to, to young people. But in New Jersey, traditionally, uh, Democrats and Republicans have worked together over time to get major, major initiatives um, accomplished, and I think that this can happen under this new governor. Do so you actually think Washington's politicians could learn something from New Jersey's? Is that well, I think so. It's all the art, the art of the deal, the art of the compromise. New Jersey's future now relies on the art of the deal among Democrats. When Murphy is sworn in January 16, 2018, Democrats take control of the governor's office and both houses of the legislature for the first time in nearly a decade. Reporting from the League of Municipalities here at the Convention Center in Atlantic City for Jersey Matters, I'm Dawn Stenz Lamenti. Larry, back to you. Still to come, gun advocates are all excited because stun guns are now legal in New Jersey. We'll talk to one next when Jersey Matters continues.